Hello everyone, and welcome back to Pokepaint, the series where I draw new Fakemon to inhabit my fan-made Pokemon region of Trapor, a region based on the British and US Virgin Islands. To those of you who are watching this on the day that it comes out, Merry Christmas. I wanted to put a little gift of my own under the tree for you this year, and I thought no gift would be better from me to you than another episode of Pokepaint. Well, there is something better. For this very special episode, I'm going to draw for you the second of my pseudo-legendary Pokemon. It's been long enough, hasn't it? And we'll tackle the final gym of the region, my dragon-type gym. But not before we tackle some dragon-themed redesigns first. I'm starting off with two redesigns today, uh, a previous dragon-type Pokemon that I've done, the first of which is Dracovern, my bug dragon-type dragonfly Pokemon. I personally love the concept of a dragonfly dragon Pokemon, and I love the first two forms, Wurmpa and Drake Insect. However, the final form, Dracovern, was a Mon that in its original version I was just not happy with. Initially, I couldn't tell why, so I still posted it. But after almost a year of designing these Pokemon and learning a ton about character design, I was able to better understand the issues that I had with the original version. The biggest issue was that the silhouette wasn't obviously Dragonfly enough. At first glance, my original idea was to place the forward wings um, on the frontmost legs, sort of like a wyvern would be, but I failed to realize that that would completely throw off the silhouette that was supposed to still look like a Dragonfly. Uh, not to mention, putting the wings so low, I felt obligated to balance it out with a head placed a little too high on the body, which made the neck too long, and again, very un-dragonfly-like. So there were certain things that I wanted to change uh, to reinforce the more heavy-handed dragonfly look. The other mistake I made was not going a certain way with the color palette. Uh, I wasn't confident enough to go all the way with what I originally had in mind, uh, which was this. Many dragonflies are closer uh, to blue in color than green. I wanted to show the evolutionary progression with a darkening of the color palette uh, from yellowish to green to bluish. I also wanted to rework the red accent colors in a more purposeful way to bring more attention to the shapes of its body. Additionally, I added a row of spines, changed the leg placements um, and face shape which allowed for this new design uh, that was absolutely worthwhile to redo. Dracovern, the dragonfly Pokemon in the evolved form of Drake Insect. Due to this Pokemon's size, its diet is widely diverse, eating both bug Pokemon like Probito and fish Pokemon like Wishiwashi. However, their favorite food is honey. Although they can be difficult to train, they have become very popular in recent years, as they can carry multiple people on their backs at a time. The second redesign isn't really a dragon-type Pokemon anymore. Let me explain. Kobydra, the evolved form of Duopent, was a Pokemon that I should have loved, but just didn't. And when someone commented that it should be a dark and fairy-type Pokemon, I knew that I have to give this one another go. Their reasoning was Dark and Fairy would play off the sort of light and dark thing that this Pokemon has going on, and that would also, as a side effect, help me downsize the amount of Dragon types I have in this region, because I just have too many. Um, but let me know if you like that change, or if you would have preferred this Pokemon to stay a Dragon like it originally was. It took me a while to figure out what my exact issue with Kobadra was, but the main thing was that it just didn't seem to have the charm that Duopen had. And I felt like that was in the loss of its very snake-like body that I really loved in its previous form. Over the course of a few months, I did a few sketches on paper and didn't really like where those went, so I didn't do it till now. This redesign's been a long time coming. What finally pushed me to go into the direction that I went uh, was I watched this video by Just Cody. One of his Pokemon for his ancient Greece region is a Hydra Pokemon called Parafun? and its shape was very similar to what I wanted for my own. So I did a sketch, uh, and additionally added a few heads to lean further into that classical Hydra idea. Um, after my sketch, I wasn't sure if I liked it, so I messed around with the colors and ended up really loving it. And in the end, through all of my design issues with this mod, I came to a design that I was super happy with. 
Kobydra, the duo Pokemon in the evolved form of Duopent. In the ancient past, this Pokemon was feared and revered, but it is now known that this Pokemon can be easily tamed by music and will become entranced by it. It is said that if a Kobydra dies in battle, its offspring will grow an extra head. However, this has never actually been observed. Alright, here's what you all are really here for, Trapor's second pseudo-legendary. This Pokemon is a little sea dragon Pokemon based on an animal that's called the Blue Glacius Sea Dragon, or Sea Angel. Um, they're a type of sea slug, and they look just super cool. Not only that, but they are super rare, making them sort of a bit of a real-life pseudo-legendary. I had a very good visual in my head for this first form, uh, and it took a few tries to translate that into this otherwise relatively simple Pokemon design. The key ended up being both in the perspective and the placement of the feathery uh, flippers or wings. I'm, I'm going to call them wings. Those were surprisingly hard to do and posed a huge challenge for this and its two evolutions. Originally, I was going to make it a water dragon type, as it's based on an animal that is called the sea dragon but I have a ton of water types already. One of them is also a dual water dragon, so taking the Glacius part of its name literally, I made it a nice type. Its name, Glacieru, comes from the words Glacier and Shoyeru, which is Japanese for rising dragon. Glacieru, the glacial Pokemon. These Pokemon have only ever been found in one cave in the entire world. They are extremely rare. They use their flipper-like wings to create cold pockets in tropical waters where it lives, riding the pressure change like air on the wind. Its second form, Wyvarctic, was another challenging design, but they all were. I really had to think outside the box for this video. In fact, I actually ended up employing a lot of the things that I learned in my redoing of the Kobydra uh, redesign. I redid this one several times as the version which I originally intended to be my final design uh, just had two main things wrong with it. The first was that its wings, no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't really get to look the way I wanted them to. And even though I tried so hard, they ended up looking like a bit of an afterthought, really. The other issue was that this Pokemon uh, had a silhouette that was far too similar to its final form, and therefore didn't distinguish it enough in its body shape or its body patterns to sell it as a form that would, you know, evolve into that last one. It almost looked like more of a branched evil or something, which <laughs> I guess is a problem as it turns out I have designing these pseudo-legendaries. So I went back and actually redesigned this after the last form. Once I had a good idea where I was going for it, it came out all the better for it. The name Wyvarctic is a portmanteau of Wyvern and Arctic. Wyvarctic, the glacial Pokemon, the evolved form of Glacieru. These powerful Pokemon create snow as they flap their wings, with a body of sub-zero temperatures. Therefore, freezing winds, or currents, emanate from this Pokemon, making it easy to tell when one is nearby. Pseudo-legendaries, as it turns out, are a huge challenge to design. 
I mean, yeah, who would have thought? So I also did many versions of this. I wanted to keep the etherealness of the real animal while also falling into the main design tropes that separate regular Mons from these pseudo-legendary counterparts. The wings were the biggest challenge. I originally tried to keep them similar in shape to the ones on Glacieru uh, that are almost hand-like, um, as I tried and failed with many previous iterations. Uh, in short, it was very difficult to make these wings look appealing, but I used a ton of reference. My first uh, change I tried to make was making them more similar to Lugia's wings, but that really didn't look great at all. So instead of oversimplifying it, I decided to make them more detailed. When I saw this dragon Fakemon that had a similar shape to what I wanted, I used that shape. The main body remained relatively consistent throughout every version of it. As I always had in mind that it would, that it would have uh, like two more pairs of fins below its main ones, as that reflects how the animals actually look in real life, while at the same time making them look otherworldly and powerful. Its name comes from the words Borealis, referring to the North Poles, and Basilisk, a, a type of serpent that's often considered to be a type of dragon. Borealisk, the glacial Pokemon in the evolved form of Wyvarctic. It is a rare sight, but in the caves where they are found, if one sees an underwater aurora, it should be known that a Borealisk is nearby. Its wings produce a chemical that keeps them moist on land, but also interacts with the water to create these beautiful waving ribbons of light. Beyond its scientific designation of the glacial Pokemon, people also call this the Angel of the Sea. So those are our newest Pokemon for this video. Let me know if Glacieru and its evolutions would make it onto your team. Doryu is the final gym leader, and his name quite directly means the one who understands the dragon. The idea of making him a child wasn't one that I originally had in mind, but over time it developed into a thought that I thought both subverted expectations in an appropriate way, and also was a little funny, having the big, strong final boss of the gyms be a 10-year-old kid who isn't even in middle school yet. I guess I should probably eat my words that I said way back at the beginning of the series about how kids are way harder to design than adults are because this design idea is very layered, to say the least. I wanted him to have the youthful excitement of a boy who just loves Pokemon and play up the almost young athlete-ness of this type of design. I also wanted to bring out a bit of that childhood fantasy into it, seeing how young kids pick a topic, like an educational subject or a person or a game or a movie to just obsess over. Uh, I thought it'd be a cool idea to have this kid be obsessed with his ace Pokemon Borealisk, having gotten his parents to buy him a hoodie to make him look like one. Editor's note, um, I completely just didn't write down anything about the badge in the script because I hadn't made it at that point. I made it super late. Uh, it's the fantasy badge and it um, it is meant to look like a family crest. Uh, my fiance is actually the one that came up with it. Uh, but I'm standing in my fiance's driveway uh, recording it outside because everybody's asleep and I don't wanna wake everyone up. And it is uh, 14 degrees. So I'm gonna go back inside. Now, back to the story.
At the far eastern side of the open sea zone, you come to what is the end of the open sea zone. A massive wall of towering white rocky cliffs and a hole in them which is locally known as the Sea End Gate. It's the final border of the wild area. And it leads into a set of sea caves called the Bound Deep Caves. Based on these sea caves called the Baths in real life on the island Virgin Gorda. But before we can enter, we encounter a certain someone at the entrance of this cave, our rival Tobias. He says he too is on his way to get his final badge. Now that the both of you almost have all of them, a Pokemon battle would definitely be interesting. In this penultimate battle, he has five Pokemon. His level 45 Dracovern has the ability Intimidate in the moves Dragon Claw for Stab, Silver Wind to deal damage while lowering your stats at the same time, Quiver Dance to raise his own stats, and Dragon Tail to forcefully bring out one of your Pokemon from your team. Tobias' second Pokemon is his Beastly Feminabra with the ability Vampirism. It has the moves Crunch for Stab, Shadow Claw for Coverage, Mega Drain to heal itself, compared with its ability boosts its power in the shadows of this cave, and finally Embargo to nullify the use of held items. This third Pokemon, as you may remember, changes depending on what starter you chose, and matches its type. It is the evolved form of the one that you fought back in the tournament battle. His level 45 Torangoro has the ability Battle Armor in the moves Hammer Arm, Liquidation, Aqua Ring, and Seismic Toss. Or he'll have a level 45 Belagma with the ability Flame Body in the moves at Lava Plume, Earthquake, Sunny Day, and Eruption. Or he'll have a level 45 Rampot with the ability Gluttony in the moves Wood Hammer, Synthesis, Stomping Tantrum, and Iron Head. His penultimate Pokemon is his level 46 Benwana with the ability Selective Venom. It has the moves Gunk Shot, Dragon Tail, Belly Drum, and Beat Up. His ace is the final form of the starter that is strong against your own. His level 49 Kefraga with Overgrow has the moves Trop Kick, Synthesis, Bulk Up, and High Jump Kick. Or he'll have a level 49 uh, Lelucent with Blaze in the moves Fire Lash, Flamethrower, Smoke Screen, and Spectral Thief. Or he'll have a level 49 Tormarine with Torrent in the moves Hydro Pump, Crunch, Razor Shell, and Protect. At the end of the battle, Tobias states how fun it was and reflects on his journey and how much he's learned since he left home. He definitely has grown as a person and as a trainer as he finally sees the value in things beyond strength. Tobias leaves you to explore the caverns of the Boundeet Caves. A set of sea caves, most of which are at water level, but some of which are above the water on rocky floors, while others are completely submerged under the water. In fact, the TM Dive, which would be your prize from whatever ended up being the last gym that you faced, is required to get through this cave, effectively sealing the 8th gym leader for last. In this cave can be found the Pokemon Gastrodon, Pincurchin, Kingler, Goribus, Huntail, Sharpedo, Lurking, and of course, the ultra-rare Glaciaroo. Coming out into the light, we arrive in Apo City. I named it as such as a shortening of the word Apocalypse, which means end of the world, as this is the end of our gym challenge. Here in Apo City, you can challenge the gym, uh, one whose puzzle is a straight-out wipeout style obstacle course. Does anybody remember that show? Um, but yeah, remember a 10-year-old designed it, so it was gonna probably be a little more amusing than the other puzzles. The gym trainers here use Pokemon like Vibrava, Dragoneer, Gyarados, Tyrantrum, Duopent, and Gabite. Arriving at the plinth where the final gym leader Doryu stands, he states, my dad calls me a child prodigy, or something like that. I just love Pokemon battles. My Borealisk just evolved. Do you want to see him? Gym Leader Doryu has five Pokemon. He leads with what he says was his first ever Pokemon, his level 49 Dracovern with the ability Intimidate, and the moves X Scissor, Fly, Quiver Dance, and Dragon Pulse. His second Pokemon is his level 50 Kingdra with the ability Sniper and the moves Hydro Pump, Smoke Screen, Dragon Pulse, and Skull. 
His third Pokemon is a level 49 Gyarados with the ability Intimidate in the moves Hurricane Crunch, Dragon Rage, and Ice Fang. His penultimate Pokemon, as he says, is his newest that he caught on vacation with his family. And it is a level 51 Flygon with the ability Levitate in the moves Dragon Rush, Hyper Beam, Earthquake, and Supersonic. He observes how you got him down to his last Pokemon, which not very many people have been able to do before in the few months that he's been training Pokemon, and that you'll now have to face his favorite Pokemon, his Ace, a level 53 Borealis with the ability Ice Body, and the moves Blizzard for an Ice Stab and Draco Meteor for a strong Dragon Stab, Embargo to keep you from healing with your own items, and Roost so he can heal himself while you can't. He may be a kid, but with Embargo and Roost, he really stacked up his moveset. This kid really knows what he's doing. But should you make it through the Embargo and pass his Roosting strategy, you will be able to win the Fantasy Badge. So that's it for the Gems of the Trapor region. Don't worry though, we're not super close to being done yet. We still have a good handful of things to do, like create some Megas and design our Legendaries. Someone mentioned during my last live stream that I should hold a contest, sort of along the lines of how many Poketubers are doing ones for their region, where fans of the region could submit designs and I'd pick out of my favorites to draw in my style and add to the Pokedex. Would any of you be interested in doing something like that? Let me know, I might just have to start a contest sometime in the new year if there's any interest. So, to those of you watching when this comes out, Merry Christmas. I hope you enjoyed this little Christmas gift from me to you. And as always, if you like this video and want to see more like it, then subscribe and turn on the bell to get notified when I upload next.